In this video, we're gonna go over how to work with the custom GPT interface and how to load all the information that you need to actually create a custom GPT. I'm gonna show you one that I'm working on and when this video goes live, you should have access to birthday gifts gesture GPT. The goal of this is to provide birthday gift suggestions with clickable links. And so the uh, little prompt here, you can say, help me find gifts for my friends and family. What it'll do from there is work with you to provide a table of suggestions. So I'll just kind of show you how it works and then I'll talk about how I've configured it. So th the way that I'm doing this uh, involves using a bunch of files. So I have a prompt like this, and this is kind of the type of information that I would expect the user to provide. And when the user provides that information as a prompt, we expect that this will go look through, build a table with these uh, pieces of information, the name of the person, the gift suggestion, when you should buy this, the estimated price, and then a link. And at this point in time, I think that the uh, custom GPTs and the actual links in the output are having some sort of technical issue, which is addressed in the forums. But with that aside, um, that's the only thing holding me back from publishing it. The idea is that this would keep a full suggestion table be subject to take your uh, your inputs on any sort of interest or hobbies that the people might have um, and then I would use that to create better suggestions so I can say for instance my, my my dad likes hunting and then it would go and it would bring me a different suggestion based off of that information it would refine everything and it would provide everyone that you need to buy a gift for for the year all in one uh, go and it would just give you that full inventory so that way you can maybe go buy gifts ahead of time um, But ultimately this is just aimed at giving you the best suggestions possible. So when you're in this uh, Interface, there's a couple things you can do so right over here on the left hand side if I don't like anything in the create tab I can go ahead and provide a text prompt that will describe um, or or prompt the GPT to change itself so it'll actually modify itself to become more functional as you intend it to be so I could say something like uh, the links are not clickable make sure the links are clickable now, I don't really expect this to actually work because of deeper issues with OpenAI. But what it'll do is it'll say updating GPT. And when that happens, it'll actually go through and it'll change the core functionality of the GPT so that it is adaptive to your suggestions. And then from there you would go to update and then you would publish out these updates. Um, and you could even roll back changes and things of that nature. So up here in the top right hand corner, you can do that. Every time that you get an update, it'll tell you that it did um, this thing and then it will revert back um, for you to then go ahead and you'll see what I mean about having that, that file handed handy right here. I wanna go ahead and copy and paste that in again and get this rolling again so I can see the output, assess it um, as it is. You know, it has the same variability in output that you would expect out of uh, chat GPT just you know in general um, I'm gonna see if this link becomes clickable and it's not okay cool um, but so the output's gonna run but over here I'm gonna show you this other tab so this is tab called configure we can name the GPT give it an image give it a description give it instructions but on top of the instructions you can give it what are called knowledge and with knowledge you can upload any files. And so what I've done here is I've constructed a bunch of different files with a bunch of different uh, data sets. So these things have all sorts of information about how to act, how to make the output look. Um, it even has just lists to just like ideas, just data I've web scraped, um, just gift suggestions, just types of items that are out there and what types of people might like them. And then I just uploaded them to it. So think of this really in terms of like, you know, you can just copy and paste a bunch of stuff from a web page or save it as any type of file and then upload it here and then it will impact uh, the knowledge base of the GPT and it can always tap into those things. So you have down here the capabilities. So you can turn on these different capabilities of web browsing, 
image creation and code interpreter. You can use all three. And then you can do what are called actions. If you click here, this is something I'm not doing, but if you wanted to, you could integrate uh, an API into here. So you could link this in to open API, do a bunch of different stuff. It has all these different authentications um, and basically just like let the GPT retrieve information outside of chat GPT. So this is how um, companies are integrating their custom GPTs into chat GPT and then making them available on this marketplace. So that's a uh, definitely just something to, to take note on. That's how that's happening. Um, you could put files here as well and you could, you know, you could provide a prompt with that, but that's ultimately how you configure, um, all these things. Right. And as, uh, potentially features like memory come online, what I'm also trying to instruct this to do ahead of time is to remember all of the people that this user has ever asked for a birthday gift suggestion for. And that list of people will be kept here and that sort of inventory of all of the um, birthday gift suggestions would all would all be there. What we have right now uh, with this, you know, the only thing keeping me from publishing is that I really would like these links to be clickable so that, that way uh, users can just quickly go over to, you know, Amazon or wherever on the internet and just grab, um, put things in their cart real fast, do all their shopping for all these people and, um, you know, just get it done with and, and not have to, uh, go and actually like type this in, um, and actually have to go like find it themselves on Amazon. So the idea with this is convenience and, um, that's kind of how I made this one. So I plan on doing a more in depth, uh, course of review, but this is just sort of a, broad overview of just kind of how creating the custom GPTs uh, works. You know, obviously you would go into the, the main area, go to my G GPTs and then say, you know, create a new one. And you can do that with the, um, the features in GPT four. So if I go out of here and I say, explore GPTs, then I explore GPTs. I can say, create right here in the top right hand corner. And then you can go and this will prompt you to describe what you're going to do. What I would do is I would focus on the files and getting all those files ahead of time before you go and you take this step. So I would define in a bunch of uh, text files, Word documents, etc., what you want so that that way you're making good use of your prompts. Also keep in mind right now that because you have that limit of 50 uh, every three hours for GPT-4, even if you're a paying member, you're going to have to keep that in mind because you can't just go and be as busy as you want to um, because you do have that limit from open AI, right? So I would build all the prompts and everything ahead of time and all the information to configure what this GPT is going to do way ahead of time and then move on it. So I hope that was helpful. Go ahead and throw this video a like, throw any suggestions you have in the comments and I'll see you later.